as content creators, it's very tempting to filter yourself. And I have to, obviously, because I've got some conversations that I would like to have that I can't have on YouTube. Yeah, I think I have been authentic. Mm. I don't think of a time I've purposely gone out thinking I'm gonna lie or something or fabricate something. One of the things I, I absolutely love about like your whole persona as, as a whole is that you're very authentic. And I think that in this day and age, you got a lot of people who want to be content creators, but not many people who know how to be authentic because I think people can, can smell it when you're not authentic, when you're, when you're trying to be yeah. an, we, a, like a watered down version of someone else. You, you know? ever come across those YouTubers have like 10 million subscribers and every video just feels so contrived. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of just fabricated almost just, mm. you know, manufactured jokes it's so fresh and clean that youtube comments and promotes them mm. but it's only meant for kids like if you watch it, you just know it's not real when you just know that person can't exist yeah 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 um so do you have you always been this sort of unfiltered because like i said it, you get into dicey territory sometimes with the sort yeah. of stuff that you do and you get yourself in trouble and like I said, a lot of people don't like you um you know but i tend to think that you just have to take these people with warts and all, you know, whatever, yes. whatever, whatever you see when you look at Lord Miles, you got to freaking respect the fact that the guy goes out and does this danger tourism, and you know his intentions are good. He might step on it from time to time, might put yes. your foot in it from time to time, but far out, man. Like you're you're original and you're doing something that is honestly trailblazing. Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I have been authentic. Mm. I don't think of a time I've purposely gone out thinking I'm gonna lie or something or fabricate something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing I could think of. Well, I mean, this is the thing though, like as as content creators, like you and I are, it's very tempting to filter yourself. And I have to, obviously, because I've got some conversations that I would like to have that I can't have on YouTube. I've got yes. people I want to have on my podcast, friends from Twitter and everything that I can't have because it's yeah. on, on YouTube, you know. And mm. I do think the day might come where uh, we don't have that YouTube platform anymore. Yeah, I mean, YouTube's um, kind of stifling some of my videos. Uh, I've noticed that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of them was shooting an RPG at an anime body pillow with the Taliban. I don't know why they'd want to start that. My first Taliban shooting video got a million views, you know, blew up. This one has like 70k. Mm. So I'm thinking, ah, you know, I feel like that's such a title and a video. It's very short too. So I'm like, mm, why didn't get more views? You know, that would blow up. It's a me it's a meme worthy video. Are you posting on Twitter? Videos, no. Yeah. No. I think it might be worth because that was a small like six minute video, yeah. Yeah, six or seven. Yeah, it might be worth getting your producer to post like like shorter clips of the videos on Twitter because Twitter's not getting stifled as much. You might get much more impressions on give, Twitter. I might give it a go actually. Yeah, because you got like two hundred fifty thousand followers on Twitter. Yeah, two thirty, two thirty. Yeah, how, how, have you just been building that over the years, or is there yeah, is my, a particular time? Yeah, my mom time? has created two hundred twenty nine thousand bots. You know, um, <laughs> alt accounts. Um, <laughs> no, I've just built it over years. Um, I actually dropped out of university when I signed up to Twitter and I got 10k I was like whoa 10k I can just drop out now I guess yeah. <laughs> like some in business I thought that was big and then I just dropped out um the university was happy to see me go regardless mm. um because they wouldn't let me publish my book so I was like okay I want to start Twitter now so I posting about stuff did a few GoFundMe's to do some trips and people were happy to help me start out do you have a pretty decent cult following I can imagine you, yeah, you're the kind of guy would have a cult following people. some people have been through for me throughout and I've gone to some of their picnics. I've gone to the barbecues, some of them in England. I met their family. It's quite nice. I send them postcards. Uh, we have a group chat. Hmm. Um, I've met a few people, friends as well, people who watch yeah. the channel and we've gotten, gotten yeah, you've talking. Got and you've grown to them, I imagine, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had, when we were in Nashville, a couple of our friends there were um, just a guy who watched the channel. He reached out to me and, yeah, he was a cool guy. And we, we hung out a fair bit. I, I don't really like to meet people off the internet normally, but, you know, no, normally you can tell if somebody's yeah. normal and cool mm. and and whatever but um it's a it's a good place to make friends man especially when like you're like you and i who are who move around a lot and who True. are who are always pretty busy and you know when yeah. i'm when i'm not you know looking at indian pacific fleet trails or <laughs> whatever so um, I, I don't imagine you go go to say cambodia and just meet meet a best make a best friend there like a random cambodian and you know become become close it's always new people and i think when you meet followers you got that somewhat of connection it yeah. becomes hard though when they 
obviously obsessed over you and there's that imbalance but as long as you chill about it yeah no that's why yeah, I, yeah normally i like i tend to meet like other guys who are content creators who kind of get it because i get really yeah. awkward when people come up to me and say like oh, you have an expectation yeah, yeah exactly when people come up and say like oh you know watch your videos and stuff i'm fucking awkward man i'm like oh yeah. that, that's great and i'm, I'm normally just like so, so what do you do like like tell me about you i don't, I don't really want to talk about myself yeah, you like, know? Oh, work with Craig, cause i'm like okay yeah no it's it's cool to me them they are kind but like uh, some people have asked like hey i want to come on a trip with you can i get your number right now i was like oh. i was like i'm sorry dude i was like I yeah can't. they're like why not i can pay i'm like i just can't they're like yeah. oh yeah but i'll be fine and they, they really push on it i mean don't get the dynamic exactly you know? right there's a, there's a real skill to relationship building yeah. and this is what I, I used to um and Vinny always used to be like to me dude why are you always replying to every single message and stuff. I'm like, because yeah, people like lending their support and everything yeah. and I want to reply. But then it got to the point where I had people messaging me every single day, like mm -hmm. multiple times a day. And it's just flooding my inbox and stuff. Have, and, then, and then eventually got to the stage where I was like, I've, I've got to stop replying to you, messages. Have you had like a, one of those obsessive stalker types yet? I've had one. Oh, um, uh, one no. guy sent me 250 messages a day. He donated, oh, wow. um, I believe it was a grand or something. He was very kind of him. I was very happy. And I was like, hey, let me send you some stuff, dude. And then turns out he's like full on schizophrenic, a uh, bit of a neat as well. Sent me 250 messages a day. I would reply to like some. I mean, why'd you reply to these? And I think he would just send random like memes. And I was like, oh, dude, uh, we can talk, but you know, like. Yeah. 250 days is a bit max. Like, I I am busy. I do yeah, yeah. have a schedule. I do have a life outside of this. I can't reply to this constantly. I'm very sorry. Like, normal relationships, you send a few messages a day max usually. yeah yeah but this is the thing and relationship building in general is a skill that and whenever, whenever i see people I, I interact with people who tend to want like there's some people who would want to have a some some sort of a relationship with me for whatever form in terms of other guys who are not not as big on youtube who are content yeah. creators or people who just like the content and you can tell with people who are good at creating relationships but then some people are just fucking terrible at it man they mm -hmm. just want to message you all the time and even i do that with other people who I look up to and respect, but I'm so conscious about how I go about because people are busy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I understand this. So I'll message them if I feel like I can add some sort of value. I'll yeah. be like, hey, man, have you seen this? Boom, boom. Yeah, like, yeah. like you can offer you this. I mean, yeah, you yeah. keep it concise, hmm. but you be polite. And then if you don't respond, you're like, okay, I'm going to message up again. It's clear that you don't respond. Exactly right. Because people tend to get offended if you don't respond and stuff, but it's like, I never get offended if someone doesn't respond because my philosophy with these sorts of things is don't be afraid to ask. Ask if you need to ask, but don't be offended when you get rejected. Exactly. You know? I've had one guy message me for over 150 days asking for 80K uh, just randomly say, hey, can you PayPal me 80K to start day trading? It's always a different message each time, so it's not a bot or anything. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's it's like, I mean, it's gone down to 50K now, so it's like... Getting lower and lower. He's like, oh, if you say no to 80, 50 would be fine. Well, you start, like, we'll start yeah, considering like, My mom has soon. diabetes and I want to start day trading to pay for her, pay for her diabetes stuff. Yeah. And I looked into this guy. I was like, he's above 18. I'm like, you know, something, something's a bit off. Yeah. So what can, brother, let's let's wrap it up. What can we expect from you in, in the near future? Besides, of course, our, our escapades to, to South America, which is going to happen. Mm. I want to walk across the entire length of Greenland. So there'll be a five month Arctic expedition. Wow. Yep, I want cool. to go to Antarctica as well. Mm. I want to explore it. I mean, I don't believe it's an ice wall, but it would just be nice to go there and like check things out. Like, oh yeah, this looks like a pyramid of a map. Yep. I want to go there and just be like, yeah, I'm here. Yes. Because no one's ever done that. That's interesting. Yep. Every dangerous place on the earth, I want to do eventually. And then North Central Island. So. I'm going to the Afghan Chinese border quite soon. Hasn't been visited since, since 1947. Sweet. I'm going to Rhodesia. Uh, it's got a different name now. South Africa too. Uh, a kind gentleman's taking me there to view a bunch of crime going on. We're going to Argentina, I guess, and Colombia. Yeah. We'll figure something out there. And then there's also just small things too, like um, there's a there's a island that the US nuked back in the 50s, uh, Bikini Atoll if you've heard of it, no. um, and they put a giant concrete dome over it. Again, no one's made a YouTube video there. I'm no go there. Uh, more stuff in Afghanistan. Again, the gold mine, 
is not to like fund <laughs> Lamborghini lifestyle. It's to fund more adventures. Mm. See what I mean? It's all about the adventures. It's like an obsession at this point. Yeah, cool. And mate, like literally, Vice, there's a gap in the market there that they've yes. opened up, and you're the guy who's feeling that at the moment. Exactly. When yeah. I told I told them when I did the meeting with um, you yeah, know, we're the, competitors. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy I met, he was worth over like fifty million pounds. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, it's high end. Met in a pub. <laughs> And I was like, hey, you know, these are my sales for Taliban merch. Now, again, you don't need to sell Taliban merch, but if you sell rogues, if you sell this stuff, if you sell a piece of adventure, again, it will cover revenue. And plus, this is the structure. And these are for some locations and I want to come on with you. It's like, yes. Great idea. So, again, it might fall through. It's fine. But I believe it will go forward. If not, it will go with another platform. And I mean, then, what, what are your plans as well? My plans? Yeah. Well, like I said, I want to create the reality-based media company. Yes. And I'd like to have a few talented creators under there in the next few years under that banner and people who like we can work with and know and trust and all that sort of thing. Excellent. But also the reality-based um, podcast is going well and I'm doing it in more of a sort of debate format because a lot of the people want to see me push back on ideas and get people I don't necessarily agree with. But this is a this is a banter sesh, yes. so there's not, none of that there. But um, do that. And then I also want to host debates in the future. So I'll get very intelligent people and I'll just mediate the debates. So the idea is to – so we do a lot of reaction and anal analysis content. I wouldn't mm. really call it a reaction, but analysis. We get the videos and we, an we analyze them and analyze the debates. But we've got hundreds of channels now who are just grabbing our shit and just copying it, basically. That's, that's, I mean, that's a compliment to some degree. But it, it's still, it is, it's still but it's annoying. like we have to figure out a way to make our own content because I want to be the one that other people are reacting to. Mm, yes. Do you know what I mean? So there's only so much of this we can do. We have to phase it out. I'm still going to do the cultural commentary and break down the debates and everything, but I have yes. to have other facets to it. And the other facets for me is hosting debates, mm. having the podcast where I'm doing debates and conversations myself, yes. and then also having that media company. And then I, I actually love the idea of that you've got of, of taking a part and then selling a part of the, of the adventure yes. as well. So I when we're in you, Cambodia, I'm going to have a look at that. I think so. I, honestly, military patches. So I've got these Taliban military patches here. They're rather cheap, uh, of course, to buy. The mm. only issue is, obviously, the risk of going to these countries, the expense of going to these countries, of course, the expense of transportation. Mm. So that's why you can sell them for, say, $45 for free plus shipping. Mm. So honestly, you just get military surplus, military patches, get, um, I don't know, cool uniforms. We could get some... In Cambodia, we get some Khmer Rouge stuff of the old communist um, party. You see, there's any, any uniforms. Even things. just like those pins. Mm. Um, I've bought some pins in Afghanistan, selling each one for two hundred pounds. Mm. Now they are worth a lot. They're very hard to come by, but it's because I've gone out of there, sought that value. If you go out to uh, Cambodia, if you make some sort of historical video, plus again the floating cities and all this other stuff, sort of sorry, uh, floating villages, find this stuff. You can absolutely get some cool stuff. If you enjoyed that reality-based podcast clip, make sure to subscribe to the reality-based YouTube channel. We'll be uploading many clips and the full podcast. And also, if you prefer the audible version, you can check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at Reality Based.